Hi, I'm Dr. Chris English. This is my assistant, Jen, and I'm going to be showing you how to put on a thumb spica splint for post-operative care of a patient. This is, this is a splint that uh, I use after a CMC arthroplasty, um, after a tendon repair or a fracture repair on the thumb. So these are the supplies that you need. A four inch ace wrap, one stack of five by 30 plaster, which is five sheets folded over, and one or two uh, four inch cast paddings. For this splint, one thing to pay attention to on it, most of the time we will try and leave the very tip of the thumb out of the splint. That way the patient can move it and avoid stiffness at the joint. But sometimes if it's a tendon repair near the tip of the finger um, or other situations, we need to actually include and go all the way to the tip of the finger. So it's always important to understand how far, how far to go on that splint if it's to, to go all the way to the tip or to be um, just short of that. We refer to that as IP free or IP in, meaning interphalangeal joint free or interphalangeal joint in the splint. So the way that uh, I like to do this splint is start on the wrist with the cast padding and then come up to the thumb and make small tears in the cast padding to allow it to fit around the thumb. And I'm gonna take about two to three loops around the thumb. And one thing, I'm gonna show you how to do this keeping the, with the IP joint free. Um, but one thing to notice is that you can see that I'm still wrapping the, the cast padding just about all the way to the tip of the thumb. Uh, and that's just to make sure that there's no plaster that's hitting the patient's skin um, and potentially irritating their skin. So I did three, three loops around the thumb and then I'm gonna do two to three loops around the palm. So there's one, two, and three. And if one thing is that I'm leaving it the I'm leaving the padding pretty bulky in this area. And the reason why is that most of the time we want this thumb in a out position. I don't want the thumb to be splinted in like this because then it may get stiff in that position. So I want to pack a decent amount of padding through here. That way it opens up the thumb and keeps in an open position. And I like to use the padding to do that as opposed to the splint because the padding's nice and soft and we'll do that. So you can see how Jen's thumb is nicely out there because all the padding that, that's packed in there. So we've got three loops around the thumb, three loops around the hand. We're just gonna go get three layers around the rest of this. I'm gonna come down overlapping by thirds. So one, two, three. And we'll get our other bit here. As I get to the top of the splint, I like to make sure I have three layers right on top of each other. So that's one layer right there, two, and three. That way there's just a nice solid edge uh, to, the, to the top of it and it doesn't have padding hanging out. So if you look, it's nice and thick right here, three layers thick. The way I like to do the plaster for this, a lot of ways that you can do it. What I typically do is I will split it lengthwise for the thumb. So I'm gonna tear a spot, and this will go on the front and the back of the thumb. And then I'm gonna tear this to the length of the splint. So you can measure, do I need about that long? Or just estimate, because you can always roll it back a little bit if you need to. So this is what the piece of plaster that I'm gonna use looks like. So in the water with this, keep track of the ends of it, wring out the extra, and laminate all the sheets together. So we got those nice and smoothed out. And what I'll do is, the plastic's really moldable, so you can just fold these over to fit the shape of the thumb. So this one I'm gonna put on the palm side and coming down here, I'll fold that back. And this one I'm gonna bring up the back. And I like to just fold them just a little bit over at the end so it has a smooth, uh, smooth surface. Let's smooth all this out on here. I like, to, I like to make sure that these aren't touching in the thumb area here. So leave some space between them because I don't want them to stick together and potentially get too tight if it swells. And then the way that I wrap this up with the ace wrap, so I take a four inch ace wrap, I go around and then at the thumb, 
I'm gonna cut a, I'm gonna cut a slot this way. And then, well, maybe not, let's see. Find one sharp spot on this scissor. Not meant for fabric, maybe. Yeah, and then I will come through here. And then as we come, then as I come back this way, I'm gonna try and cut a long slot in it that will then accommodate the, the thumb. So, so there we have the, the, pla the ace wrap covering that all the way and then the, the ace wrap tidying the whole thing up. We'll just wrap up the rest of it. And then usually what I do as this dries is I make sure that, uh, that I did leave enough motion or enough uh, motion available for the thumb if we're doing an IP joint free. So like this one where we're keeping the IP joint free, I'll actually just move the patient's thumb and make sure, okay, the plaster's not impinging on the thumb, there's plenty of motion. And as, it, as the plaster cures, I'm just gonna hold in here and make sure I'm stabilizing this exactly how I want it. Okay, thank you.